afternoon and welcome to the African Heritage Diaspora Television Still the ultimate voice for Africans in the diaspora. My name remains Prince Tunde at the Tunji. Airport and seaport undoubtedly are the greatest assets to the development of any city and any economy in any country. The city of Atlanta is blessed with the Hartford Jackson Airport, which has commanded the interest of the and the science of the international community since the 1996 Olympics. The infrastructure that commands the tourism and the hub business has made Atlanta the mecca, the gateway of the global potentials, especially the African nation's potential to the country of the United States. Of course, kudos and credit should be given to the mayor that actually did it fit, the visionary that said, Alfie Jackson Airport is a place that will launch Atlanta to this title. With me today to discuss this vital, great airport is the community-oriented professionals, the man who has done it all, who travel from Salt Lake City to Tampa, and finally, the destination is Atlanta. His name, Mr. Louis Miller. Mr. Luis Miller, you are welcome to the African Heritage Diaspora Television. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate being here. Well, um, your story is quite uh, great and very impressive. You were an accountant yeah. by training, yeah. but eventually you uh, made giant stride in the development of airport. Salt Lake City, Utah yeah. is where you started. Yes. Now, you are in Tampa, Florida. Finally, you are here in Atlanta. What a great journey. I want to say that we congratulate you. We are very proud of you. And Atlanta is really, really uh, fortunate to have you, have you here at, as the henchman for the Hartford Jackson Airport. Now, let's begin. Tell us your story. How did you start this well, relationship? Like you started, actually I started before I was a, a CPA, I was in the United States Army yes. from 1965 through 69, Sergeant E-5 rank, got out of the Army and fortunately I used the, the GI Bill to go to college and I went through college at Stevens Henry Business College and the University of Utah and I started out as a CPA as you mentioned earlier and I practiced as a CPA up until 1976. And in 1976, I decided, since I was an accountant, CPA, I didn't want to look back, because auditors are always looking backwards. I wanted to be a visionary and look forward. So I went out to become the chief accountant at the Salt Lake City Airport. And I did that in 76. And then I became the finance director. And then in 1982, they made me the airport director. So I was the airport director in Salt Lake City for 14 years. 14. And then in 1996, as you mentioned, I went to Tampa to become the airport director in Tampa. I did that for 14 years as well, so that must be my mantra, 14 years at a time. So maybe I'll be here 14 years. But, uh, and then it, when they called me and I had a chance to come to Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, the busiest airport in the world, as you know, it was just an honor for me. And when I met Mayor Reed, you mentioned before uh, the mayors that started this, Mayor Hartsfield and Mayor Jackson, are the ones that really got the visionaries that got us where we are today. But I tell you, Mayor Reed is looking in the same direction. He's trying, he's focused on the future. He wants to make sure we continue to grow the airport in our directions. And so uh, some of his priorities we'll talk a little bit about later, but I'm just, it's a thrill for me to be here. Yeah, you are welcome to the Hartford Jackson Airport, and this is where the action of the world is now. Uh, been the busiest airport uh, since uh, uh, the emergence of the 1996 Olympics. Now, let's go into the specifics. Sure. I would like you to educate from your professional knowledge of the management of airport and the success of what you have done. You've actually uh, built so many projects. You've uh, established so many credibility and criteria of various airports at the Utah, um, uh, Miami, uh, in Florida, now in Georgia. Airport and aerodrome, what is the difference? 
between airport and aerodrome. Well, aerodrome is more something that serves around the airport yes. and, can, and is for the community, not necessarily for flying or not necessarily going somewhere. The key to what we do and what we try to accomplish is the airport. And our goal as an airport operator is to make sure we provide a smooth transition for the people to get from ground transportation to air transportation and then back to ground transportation when they leave. You know, here at, at Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta National Airport, there are 58,000 people that work here, that are working here when you consider airline employees and airport employees and the Transportation Security Administration and Customs and Border Protection and all of the, the vendors that are here, the concessionaires, food and beverage and merchandise. And our job is to bring them all together and cre create a family and a partnership to make sure we can make that smooth transition. Providing the highest level of customer service is our number one priority. However, we can't sacrifice safety or security because in, in this day and age, security and safety are, 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 that's the most important. But customer service is very important too. So our work towards growing the airport in a direction that will provide higher levels of service and meet the needs of the community, you know, I mentioned Mayor Reed. Mayor Reed is really pushing air cargo. We want to have air cargo development coming out because you need to get products and services, goods as well as people. So, and I, you know, I went through that in Salt Lake City and in Tampa and now here, and it's just having the opportunity here in Atlanta is just amazing and, and it's such a welcoming city. I mean, I've been here six months now. People like yourself and others have talked to me and they welcome me with open arms and they say they're glad that I'm here and they'll do whatever they can to try to help and make the airport a success. And it, it, we need community support to do that. There are three kinds of people. Those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, and those that wonder why and how it happens. <laughs> you fall among the category of people that make things happen. <clears throat> Atlanta Airport, Hartford Jackson Airport, true story, since 2009, has been reputed to be the most busiest airport now in the world today. Yes. And it's serving almost about 88 million people. Yes. Easy out and uh, easy in, in and out. And uh, there is a good record of tight security, no incident. The airport is developing. What is your mission and the vision for the Hartford Jackson Airport? Well, uh, first of all, our, our mission and vision is to continue moving in that direction, to continue with the growth, and to continue providing the high level of service that we have in the past. And we have been recognized and awarded for, our, for, for the level of service that we provide. So that's something we're pleased with. But the biggest challenge that we face is as we grow and we grow and we grow, we've got to develop and bring more things online to make it work. And right now, we're planning in the spring of 2012, which is just a little over a year away, we're going to open the new Maynard H. Jackson International Terminal. And that will be, provide us with 12 additional international gates mm -hmm. on top of the 28 gates that we already have on E. So we'll have, actually have a complex of 40 gates for international arrivals. That's one of the largest in the country. And so we're hoping and we're working with the airlines to develop us in the future that we get more international service, more flights to Africa. For example, right now we have 17 flights a week going into Africa in four different countries. We hope to have that grow and get more in the future. Uh, there are other opportunities. We can go through Kent, New York, going through Kennedy Airport, and there's that additional four destinations down into, into Africa. But we would like to see those flights all coming through Atlanta because it makes it easy for our community. Now, one thing people don't know, and that's, you know, we have 88 million people a year last year, almost 89. Yes. But 70% of those people never leave the airport. They just get off one plane to another plane. And so really the strength of the having the hub, the connecting hub where you gather the people together and you have carriers, you know, notable, like Delta Airlines is phenomenal. They do a ter terrific job here. AirTran is our second largest carrier. They're doing very well. And then we have a lot of foreign flag carriers and a lot of carriers, you know, the other U.S. carriers. So we have the mix of what we need and we see the future coming. Now, there's another announcement that was just made, uh, Southwest acquiring AirTran. Yes. You read about that. Yes. Uh, very good news, and in the future, it's going to be good for our community. AirTran's a terrific airline, don't get me wrong. But Southwest has been around a lot longer. Sure. They serve 39 markets in the United States right. that AirTran doesn't serve. Hmm. So that's more opportunities uh, here from Atlanta. 
29 of those markets are west of Atlanta, so that gives us more opportunity to go to the west. And the southwest will start into doing some international service for the first time, and so that, that's good for us as well. Now, they won't go as far as Africa, but they will be flying into the Caribbean and Latin America and into Mexico and places like that. Well, I think uh, this is very impressive from the avalanche of uh, different development and stories. Uh, it's been good for the Hartley Jackson mm -hmm. Airport. Now, um, let us look into the area of day-to-day -day management of the airport. I know that uh, you are not strange in the area of how to put things together, how to uh, create more things, and also how to make things move, and also how to get everything stabilized. To reach the top is one task. Mm -hmm. To retain and maintain and be at the top is an adult task. Yes. Atlanta has the Jackson Airport now is at the epoch, the zenith of its calling, the epoch. Mm -hmm. For this airport to remain the best, the alluring airport, and also the airport that command uh, the sensitivity and also the tourism of the world, the business of the world. What would be your number one, number two, number three objectives? To continue to make sure we meet the requirements the of the users. Yes. The expectations of the users. To make sure when they come to the airport they have a place to park. Right. A convenient parking place. That yeah. is very important to them. Right. That we have adequate ground transportation coming to the airport. If they take a taxi cab or right. if they take a limousine or they take a bus or they come in on MARTA. So we want to make sure we provide that transition so they can get from the ground into the terminal building. Then we need to make sure we keep and continue to grow the processing to go from the terminal building to the gate. Then when they get on the gate, get on the airplane to make sure there's a smooth taxi availability so they can taxi out to the runway and get out of here without delay. And so that's our goal is to provide the facilities like this last winter when we had the ice storm. Right. Lots of problems with that, but we need to work with the airlines to make sure we have the de-icing facilities to sure. de-ice the airplanes. Mm -hmm that the airplanes can move, that if the snow comes down like it did, mm -hmm. that we clean the runways off very quickly and they're available for the people to use them. And, you know, the number one, a person, they want to get through without being delayed. Right. So our goal is to make sure we make it as that transition very smooth and easy without sacrificing security. So we have to work with the Transportation Security Administration and we do a good job working with them. We've expanded our number of lanes, the, the, the lanes where you can go through to get screened, up to 32 lanes into three different checkpoints. We have the north checkpoint, the south, and the central. And by having all these, this quick access through security makes it a lot better for the customer. They get from where they want to go to where they want to go very quickly. And then we make sure when they're there, if they are waiting and they have time, that we have food and beverage concessions for them to utilize, uh, merchandise for them to buy if they want to buy a magazine or they want to buy something to take on the airplane. So we go through a long process of keeping everything available to everybody, and it's, it's a lot of work. I know. I want to say that that is a very a great work job and also a lot of work. Uh, but uh, they say there is no second chance to force impression. Right. Anybody that comes to Hartford Jackson Airport, what they are looking for is service. They don't want to miss their flight. Right. They don't want the flight delayed. Right. There is adequate security. Then they have people that are friendly and also give them the hospitality, a beautiful one. Uh, these are composition and combination of uh, what makes the history of a strong airport. And this has been reported to Atlanta Hartford Jackson Airport. From your record, from Salt Lake City to Tampa, You've done this very well. These points I mentioned, especially top security, mm -hmm. especially the maintenance of the airport facility, especially people coming and uh, they do their job very well. They are at the right place at the right time. And especially uh, also people not missing their flight due to traffic, parking, and everything. And especially the aircraft is leaving on time yes. <laughs> and arriving on time. Yeah. What are your areas of changes, maintenance, and also your antidote you want to put into this to make sure this is solid and rich? And working with the airlines, we have to have the airlines cooperation in what we're doing 
talking to them about how they schedule their flights. Good. So they don't schedule them all at the same time. You have all that congestion. Yes. You know, we have, uh, believe it or not, we have 950,000 departures a year is how many planes are taken off. And on a, on a busy day, we'll have 275,000 people in going through the terminal in one day. Mm -hmm. So it's like a city unto itself. And things can change as you're going forward. The weather can change. And so what you need to do is make sure you have a program where you can react to things that happen. I mean, it, when everything is smooth, like today is a beautiful, sunshiny day, everything is nice and everything is going well and we don't have any problems. But it's not only what happens in Atlanta. Like, for example, we have all the flights to New York City. Well, if the New York City flights get delayed for some reason because of a snowstorm in New York City, that impacts what happens here in Atlanta. And the same thing is true in Chicago and Dallas and other major cities in the country yeah. because people are flying and making connections through here to go to their other cities. So you have to be able to watch that and be prepared for those delays and then have action plan in place. For example, if people find themselves staying here overnight, we've got to make sure that we have the, the food concessions open for them so they can get something to eat if they need or something to drink and, they can, and, and wait because uh, those are the irregular operations. When everything runs smoothly, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's easier. Mm -hmm. But when it's, you have the irregular operations is when you have to be able to react to those. Right. And the other thing for our future now, we're, we've reached a point when we open the new international terminal next year yes. that we're going to be trying to maintain our facilities. Mm -hmm. This terminal building that we're in right now was built in 1980. Okay. So it's 31 years old. That's right. They start getting old, and mm -hmm. some of the concourses are that old. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the the uh, transportation mall where the trains that are going back and forth and, sure. and the moving sidewalks. So we've got to get into a position, what we call asset management going forward, maintaining the sustainability of the airport mm -hmm. and making sure things don't break down. So, so we do proactive maintenance and not reactive maintenance. Right. So that's what we're working on now. In fact, we've created a new department mm -hmm. within our city that we're calling asset management. Okay. So they'll prepare ourselves, you know, because as facilities get older, they require more maintenance. You gotta change out the air conditioning, change out the lighting systems, do things like that. Like in the parking garage, we're having a project going on right now to, to change the lighting, to have energy efficient lighting system that provides the highest level of light at the lowest possible cost while maintaining energy. So it's important that we reduce the impacts on the community. We just bought 18 compressed natural gas buses mm -hmm. to shuttle people to the, to the parking lots. Okay. We want to convert our fleet to compressed natural gas as quickly as we can. That's quite Here again, yeah. for the, the environment around us so we, that we can protect that environment as we move forward. And it's very important to Mayor Reed that we're sustainable and that we have ourselves to get as much sustainability as possible. And so we're working on that too. That is, uh, uh, that is quite impressive. They say change is the only constant thing in life and <laughs> growth is a recession. And this is exactly what you've mentioned that really make uh, people that have actually tasted yeah. the service at the airport and that the best is yet to come. Yeah. Now the best is yet to come in those areas and I believe that uh, with all these introductions, innovations and everything, you want to sustain the credibility and the standard. Now <clears throat> let us look into the area of uh, the employees. Mm -hmm. You are the general manager of the airport. Mm -hmm. On easy light here that we are the crown, but you are already uh, a man that has been tested and you know what you want. And you have the, a, a, a lieutenant that easily maintain and make sure that things work on very well. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about it. How many employees do you have at this airport? Well, we have just over a thousand that work directly for me. Over and above that, we have the, the police and fire, another couple of hundred people. And then, of course, we have a lot of contract folks that work for us, the, the janitorial services that maintain things, some of the landscaping contracts. So it's a, it's a matter of I recognize that the most important and most valuable asset that I have are the employees that work for me. Yes. They are the ones that make things happen. That's true. And so you have to take care of your employees. You have to do what you can do to keep their morale as high as possible. Mm -hmm. So the employees are, are committed to what they're doing. They just don't come to work. They come to work because they want to come here and enjoy what they're doing. And they're committed to the airport and they're committed to the city of Atlanta. And that's the atmosphere that we try to create. And we, by creating that, that atmosphere, we get a return on our investment because the employees work harder mm -hmm. and they're dedicated and they care. 
We have a tremendous training program out here. We actually go out and train not just the employees that work for me directly, mm -hmm. but we train the concessionaire employees on customer service. Yes. We train the airline employees on customer service and the police and fire to get that, that thought pattern across to all of the employees that work out here need to take care of the customers yes. because the customer service is what we're all about. And so when you can go even to the person that's selling you a hot dog, mm -hmm. all the way up to the, per the pilot that's flying the airplane, mm -hmm. all of us have a role that we play that's true. and we have to make sure that we're all treat our employees well, treat employees with dignity and respect. They deserve that. Whether they're a maintenance worker or they're the highest level employee, we're all the same. We're all part of a family and we just want to make sure we do it jointly and do it together. Okay, that's a good point. Now, information they say is power. When people come to the airport, they want adequate information about what is going on, adequate information about their flight, and also instructions. Yeah. Um, how do you manage this area? Yeah. And who are the components of people that makes these things happen, yeah. and how do they work in mutual collaboration with you? Working with the people, again, we'll walk around. I mean, you, the wayfinding system you're talking about. Right. You've got to have signs to tell people where Good. they're going. Good. From the minute they drive on the airport, when they're driving on the airport, until they get into the terminal, then they can find signs that tell them that they need, here, here's where my gate is, yes. but they also need to know where the restrooms are. That's true. They need to know where baggage claim is. They need to know where the ticketing is. They need to know how to get down to the transportation mall. So our number one goal is any time a person is anywhere in the airport, they can look up and see a sign that will tell them where they need to go. And I think that's the important part of the signage and the graphics program. Mm -hmm. And having the flight information display screens. Because mm -hmm. they want to look up at the screen and say, oh, I'm flying on, on, a, on a Delta flight to Tampa. Which gate do I have to go out of? That will tell you up there where you're going. So we make sure we keep plenty of flight information display systems out there. We keep the wayfinding system is what it's called to tell you how to get around. We have a, a, a PA system if someone you know, gets, they can make announcements that something is closed down. If we try to keep our, our, our website up too. Mm -hmm. We have a website that'll tell you how long the wait time is at the security checkpoints. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to keep the wait time averaging at 10 minutes most Good. of the time, but okay. never above 20 minutes. On the peak times, you still want to keep it below 20 minutes. So that way the customer, when they're coming to the airport, they know that if they get here an hour before, right. they'll have time to get through security. Yes. They'll have time to get to the gate, and the airlines like you at the gate with mm -hmm. a half an hour before the flight departs if possible. So you try to get here, you know, if you get here an hour and a half early, it's very easy for you to get through this, this whole system. Okay. Well, I think the transition at the airport, especially you know, what is going on at the Arthur Jackson Airport now, is enormous. You're looking at uh, opening the fifth terminal, uh, mm -hmm. the international terminal, yes. which is uh, going to be um, uh, dedicated uh, in uh, 2012. In the spring of 2012. In the spring yeah. of 2012. That will bring enormous traffic again to the airport here. Now, if we look into the development over the years with all this upsurge, uh, the international terminal which is going to open again and also uh, with what you have got already. In terms of your gross revenue, gross revenue mm -hmm. of what you have seen before, what do you anticipate to be the gross revenue of this airport? Well, we're growing right now. It's just over $400 million on yes. revenues. Yes, yes. And in addition to that, we get federal grants and we get past facility charges. So we have a program in place. We have shown and we have a lot of, we borrow our own money. We have outstanding debt. We right. want to make sure we meet our coverage requirements. So we actually have a, a financial plan yes. that takes us out to the year 2020 okay. right now. And then we can even go beyond that period of 2020. But you mentioned the international terminal yes. and you talked about signs. I was going to focus yes. something that, that, that you're viewers need to know when that new international terminal opens you will come into the airport from uh, a different freeway right so actually today when you came to the airport you yes. came out on 85 yes when you go to the new Maynard H. Jackson International Terminal you'll right. be on 75 on 75 so, okay so you'll come in off 75 so we get what we got to do is make sure that we have signs all over the freeways telling people where to go okay we actually anticipate it'll cost us 
10 million dollars oh, wow. to change the signage program to get people directed to the right place so okay. when they come out so then we'll have to not only build the international terminal we have to build parking out there we'll open on opening day we'll have uh, 3600 parking spaces that'll go up to 7500 parking spaces within a few years a new roadway system coming in so it's just kind of that decision point hmm. so if you're coming out here from downtown atlanta yes. when you're driving out and you get once you get south of interstate 20 right there's signs that say interstate 75 85 yes so 85 brings you here yes 75 there. takes you to the international so we have to tell hmm. people that and it's going to be a learning process yes. for our customers mm -hmm. the other good thing about the international terminal the yes. new one yeah. is when you come back and you go through customs and immigration right you don't have to recheck your bag yes <laughs> so you'll be able to go right out in the front get in your taxi cab and go away or go to your parking garage or wherever you are so it'll make that transition pot very hmm. quick now if for some reason the passenger goes to the wrong terminal right we will have a shuttle bus okay that will take people back and forth and it's only a 10 minute ride so it's not a big deal but once people learn the process and they hear again if you follow the signs it'll tell you how to get there but you know, we're, we're all creatures of habit. <laughs> yes, I know. We, we, you know, we've done this all, all our life, so that's what I'm going to do today. So yes. we've got we to re-educate the users of the airport, and that's going to be our goal. And I know I've talked with Mayor Reed about this quite a bit, and he's, he's certainly on board with what we're doing, and he's helping us to get this, this message out. So it's going to be interesting. Well, I think uh, it's a great airport make great cities. What you have because you demystify traffic. And that's exactly what makes the passenger to be very happy and joyful. Going to the international take 75, going to the domestic take 85. Now, if we look into um, what you are spending, you say you're going to spend about 10 million. Just on signs. Uh, on the signs alone. What is the anticipated uh, benefits in your own calculation that would bring uh, something soccer or maybe make the spending justifiable what do you think in the next uh, your projection for the next five years I think what it'll do it allows us the opportunity to have more international flights right it allows those people that take those flights to have a directional program a signage program that gets them to where they want to go mm -hmm. and it allows all of the airlines the foreign flag carriers as well as the domestic carriers, Delta Airlines and the others that are flying, an opportunity to have more international flights. Yes. And right now we have 60, we have service to 60 cities outside the United States, international cities. 60 cities? 60 cities in 40 countries. We want to see that grow, and that'll grow a lot. Within the United, within the United, within the United States, we have nonstop service to 150 cities. So we're, you know, that's why we're one of the busiest airports in the world. It's, we are the busiest because we have so much air service opportunity. And you have so many people that use Atlanta to make a connection to get on another flight and to go internationally. And so that's why the focus is on the international terminal to sure. allow them to grow. We're going to extend, uh, we're in the process of extending one of our longest runways to make it a little bit longer so the flights can go further. You know, we have five runways now, oh, yes, five yes. active five runways, runways. Uh -huh. uh, which is very, very good. And we, we got to, we're going to do a master plan, too. We're going to take our master plan and update it. The last time the master plan was done here was 1999. Hmm. So this year, we actually we have a, a request for a proposal on the streets. We're going to hire a consultant to come in and help us with where are we going to be 20 years from now, where are we going to be 30 years from now, to help us plan for that so we know, do we need another runway? Do we need more concourses and gates? And mm -hmm. where do we build them if we need them? And this master plan is going to lay that out, out for us as we're going forward into the future. And you talked about the future. I worry about the future more than I worry about today. Correct. Because that's what our job has got to be, to sure. help people in, in the future. You know, the day-to-day -day operations that are handled very well. Okay. This is a very good point you made. You know, international, airport, uh, international flight is the key. And again, I want to say good night, America, and good morning, Africa. Okay. Already that is happening now. Leaving Ashby Jackson Airport in the evening and getting to Johannesburg in the morning.